section 3.2 is the slope of a line. There's three different formulas for slope. Uh, this first one, um, M is the letter that represents slope, and it's your rise over your run. This formula is mostly used when you're given a graph, and you can count when you rise. If you have a positive number, it's up. A negative number, you go down. And then on the bottom, if you have a positive number, you go right. And a negative number, you go left. When you have tables, we usually uh, find slope by doing the change in y over the change in x. This one's probably the least used formula. And this last one is our uh, formula when given two points. And this is the one that we use most often. I'll put a star by it. This is one you're going to have to memorize this and be able to use this one for many problems. Okay, there's four types of slope. There's a positive slope, there's a negative slope, a slope of zero, and a slope of undefined. One of the easy ways to remember undefined is up and down. Okay, it's up and down, it's undefined. So um, these are just things that you're going to memorize, and the sooner you do, the better you, the better off you'll be. The first thing, another thing that you're going to have to know is that X is a number, is a vertical line. Okay, and we talked about that some in one of the previous lessons. The slope is undefined. Y equals a number, is a horizontal line. The slope of all horizontal lines is zero. So these are just some quick facts that you need to know and have memorized, and it'll help you later on whenever you're going to start doing some more complicated things with equations. The first thing we're going to do is find the slope of a line. When we're given two points, we have our formula, which is slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If I was to label these, this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So I have, for my formula, I'm going to have 11 minus 6 over 7 minus 1. And then I simplify that. So 11 minus 6 is 5. 7 minus 1 is 6. My slope is going to be 5 6. Number 2, the same thing. If I net label these, okay, now I'm going to use y2. My slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 11 minus 7 is 4 over negative 5, so the slope is negative 4 fifths. Okay, you can leave the negative in the bottom or you can bring it to the top. Both of these represent a negative 4 fifths slope. Alright, number 3. And the, the more you do of these, the less time you'll have to take in labeling them, but it's the slope is going to be y2 minus y1, x2 minus, and then x1. Before I can solve this, when I have minus a negative in the middle right there on the bottom, I have to add my inverse. So that becomes 5 minus 5 is 0 over 5, which is 0. Okay, number four, I'm going to label my points and then do my slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so that's negative two over zero. You cannot divide by zero, it's going to be an undefined slope. Number five, since it's a graph, I can either do one or two things. I can either name this point zero, negative two, and name this point two, two, and use my formula that I did for numbers one through four, or I can do rise over run. Count how many do you go up. So let me use a different colors. So I have one, two, three, four. So you rise four. 
and then you run, you go to the right, 2. So then simplify that. 4 divided by 2 is just 2. So my slope of this line is 2. Okay. The other thing that I could have done is, like I said, name these ordered pairs, which is 0, negative 2, and then the ordered pair 2, 2, and use the formula on those two points. So whatever you prefer to do, um, you can both work the same. Number six, since it's a graph, I'm just going to calculate rise over run. So I'm going to go from there to there. So rise is one, two, three, four. So my rise was four. My run, since I'm going to the left, is going to be negative, but it's one, two, three, four, five. My run was five, and since I went to the left, it's negative. So my slope is going to be negative four fifths. Okay, or I can name these ordered pairs, which this one is negative 2, 3, and this one right here is 3, negative 1, and use my slope formula, and my equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and solve it that way. Next, we're going to be talking about slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. The m represents the slope, and it's always the value in front of the x. And then your y-intercept is your b. The y-intercept is represented as an ordered pair, always 0, and then whatever your b value is. So in number 7 through 12, 10, we want to find the slope and the y-intercept. Well, if I wrote my original formula, y equals mx plus b, it makes it pretty easy to see that the m in this one is negative 1. Your m is a known negative 1. And your b is 5, so as an ordered pair, the y-intercept is 0, 5. Okay? And number 8, if I wrote it, y equals mx plus b, my slope is 5, my y-intercept is 0, negative 2. Number 9, it's not solved for y, so the first thing I need to get, do is get y by itself, so I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So then I have y equals negative 2x plus 7. If I wrote my formula, underneath, formula right underneath it, I have y equals mx plus b. Uh, it's easy to recognize that the m is negative 2, and your b is 7, so as a y-intercept, as an ordered pair, it's 0, 7. And then we have number 10. We want to solve for y, so we're going to move x to the other side. negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 10. Divide everything by negative 3. And y equals 2 thirds x minus 10 thirds. Okay, so my slope, my m is 2 thirds. And my y-intercept is 0, negative 10 thirds. So once you solve for y, it's just recognizing and naming your slope and your y-intercept. Number 11, since this is our special case, we said x equals is always going to be a vertical line. My slope is, we said, undefined. And it has no y-intercept no y-intercept. Okay, and then over here, y equals negative 2. That's a horizontal line, so that my slope is going to be 0, and my y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 2. And on number 13, y equals mx plus b. There's a known 0 over here that it's not represented because it's just a value 0. So, 
My slope is going to be 1 7th, and my y-intercept is just the ordered pair 0, 0, which is the origin. Okay, so that's just naming your slope and your y-intercepts. And these two are your special cases that you memorize. x equals a number is a, a vertical line. y equals a number is a horizontal line with a slope of 0.